you're at all like me, once you make the decision to install a rain garden in your house, you want to get outside and start digging right away. However, taking the time to plan for where to put your garden will give you the best chance of having a successful installation down the road. Here are a few tips to help guide you in this process. First, you want to stay at least 10 feet away from a house that has a basement. The reason for this is that you don't want to be adding extra water right next to your foundation where it can likely come inside the basement. So you want to make sure that your space far enough away from that building. Second, you want to avoid areas that always seem to be wet in your yard. This is a common misconception. Many people think that a rain garden is a water garden and it should be wet all the time. That's actually not the case at all. If you put a rain garden in an area that of, of your yard like this, where you likely have a high water table or very tight compacted soils, the garden is not going to drain well and it will not function well in the long run. So you definitely want to avoid putting it in an area like this. You also want to avoid placing the rain garden right near a wellhead if you have a well on your property. You don't want to be adding extra water right near that well casing. And the same goes for septic systems. You'll know that if you have a septic system at your house and you'll likely know where the septic tank is. You may not know exactly where your leach field is, so if you have trouble locating that, you may need to check with your town hall just to make sure that you're not going to be putting a garden right on top of that. In most cases, those leach fields are quite a distance away from the house, usually at least probably 30 to 40 feet. So you probably won't have to worry about it, but it's better to check with your town hall just to be safe. You also want to avoid placing your garden where you have bedrock very close to the surface. And this is probably not the case for most residential applications, but you'll know if you have bedrock on your lot, you'll know that if you've dealt with this in the past, you just want to avoid having a garden right on top of ledge that's very close to the surface because that water is not going to go anywhere. It's not going to infiltrate into the ground. Steep slopes are another area of concern. So you can use a, a modification on the design if you have a moderate slope on your area where you're looking to put the garden. So when you're removing soil for your the shallow bowl of your rain garden, you can use that soil as a berm on the downslope side. So that works quite well. If you have a little bit more of a steeper slope, you may need to put a retaining wall in on the lower end. So this is adding some complexity and perhaps some cost to the garden. So you want to take these factors in, into consideration. And if you have a very heavy slope, it's probably best to look at another spot to put your rain garden. Also very important is to watch for erosion where the water is moving into and out of the garden. So in, in most cases where water is coming in, it might be in a pipe. So you want to put some stone in that area to disperse the energy of that water so that it doesn't erode the soil. And also you want to make sure that you have some idea of where the water might be going in an overflow situation. So the rain garden will contain most of the rainfall events, but in a very heavy storm, that water will fill up in the garden and will need some place to go. So you'll just want to make sure that that area is directed to somewhere that it can drain away from the building spaces. And also you try to keep that as open as possible and not in a narrow concentrated flow. If you're concentrating that flow it will have more power to erode. And that's it. So we think these are some good tips for you for your garden and now the next step is to get out there and start digging.